It's on Friday Football Fever. Brought to you by Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. How's your energy, Southern Arizona? It's now time for the highly acclaimed, much anticipated Friday Football Fever. Good evening to you. I'm Paul Cicala. And I'm Ari Alexander. Paul, tonight we are in our bag. Look at this. I love it. Getting Got some of the top games, some of the top talent, and we are cooking up. Yeah, cooking up some of the top highlights stay in Southern Arizona. Stay away from pot, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> We got a lot of good games that we got. Push Ridge, Sabino, Miranda Sienega, South Point CDO, much, much more. Not to mention, of course, Flowing Wells with just one loss, hoping to solidify playoff positioning going Cook. up against Desert View. Cook this, my friend. All Cook right, but football. first, Let's do back it. to the edge of the Santa Catalina Mountains. Sabino is pumped up against Push Ridge, and early on, the Sabercats, Jonathan Stanton, will back up, and he can't find anyone he can just run a little bit forward, getting tackled just short of that first down. Sabino would punt, but later get, they would get the ball back and A.J. Skaggs will scramble a bit until he's about to be pulled down and sadly he'd be injured and out a couple plays. Sabino, though, will bust out with a field goal right here by Johnny Atman. Sabercats once again doing it up and they'll get the ball and down there. McAllister is breaking off a little something, something. That's a big game, so he'll get rewarded and get the ball again. McAllister scores a touchdown. Sabino runs away with it. Sabercats win. Final score, 23-7. to seven. And now, flip out on this, or shall I say, trip out on this, with Sawarita and Catalina as the Trojans. Trey Daniels is going to throw up the jump ball and check out Leon Hayes snagging it over the defender for the touchdown. That'll give Catalina a 14-8 lead. And Salwarita marches back. Colin Fanning is about to throw it to Christian Gonzalez. That's a touchdown. Mustangs take the lead back 16-14. Now off the line drive kickoff to Leon Hayes. And he is no Nestle quick, but he is Speedy Gonzalez with the jukes. Andale, 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 andale. Gotta love his juke that we just saw. This, folks, is worth seeing again. How about this? Heck, could be the play of the night. The Trojans take the lead again after that touchdown 2016. Here's the replay, but when our cameras left, Sawarita heated up straight caliente. The Mustangs end up winning 34 to 26. And in the month of October, lots of people dressed up in the crowd with a Halloween theme. So I say, trick or treat, smell my feet. Give me something good to eat. In other words, feed the ball to Flowing Wells. Very own Isaiah Williams Russell off the kickoff, and he is picking up some great yardage. The Flowing Wells Caballeros definitely in business. And a bit later, Desert View's Anthony Trujillo is about to take down Rashad Henderson. Jaguars are bearing down. But after that, Flowing Wells quarterback Zachary Jurado is about to get the ball to Rashad Henderson. And after the reception, breaking a tackle, turning it up, sprinting down the sidelines, and this turns out to be a touchdown. The Caballeros lead 7-0, but on the ensuing kickoff, the Jaguars, Chalasalot, is making it happen, Captain. He will find a big opening and breaking off some yardage for the Jaguars. And after that, quarterback Ryan Corral will hand the ball off to Jacob Ramirez and check out that humongous hole, but will not be enough for Desert View in the end. The Jaguars fall big. The Caballeros are flowing well win, 48 to zip. All right, let's head on out from the west side, just east of Interstate 10, all the way to the south side, just north of Valencia. That is where Sunnyside was hosting Ironwood Ridge. Ari Alexander joins us with more. Hey, Paul, both of these teams on the outside looking in at the Class 5A playoffs, ranked 19 and number 22. Remember, top 16 get in. Win for either of these guys would look good on the resume as Sunnyside hosting Class 5A game against Ironwood Ridge, and the Blue Devils are going to break out a run. Martin Arvizu right up the middle, and check out the ref getting taken down on the play. Move! Arvizo inside the five, same drive. Arvizo is going to fight his way into the end zone. Touchdown, sunny side. This time, no refs in the way. Ironwood Ridge hitting back, though. Octavio Audrey Cobos on the quarterback keeper for the touchdown. And then I Ridge going deep. Audrey Cobos, little play action. Then he's going for Andrew Cook and let him cook. Long touchdown pass. Nighthawks pick up the win 29 to 12. 
on to Vail where Empire is hosting Choya and Wyatt Jeffries. 50 yards away from breaking the school rushing record. Jeffries would get it in the first half, but the Empire offense would struggle. They are down six to nothing at halftime. This is a strange game. We had a fourth and 47. This punt, ooh, big boy punter, fielded and returned by Jalen Smith. Ends up being a solid gain for Empire. Down six nothing, looking for any sort of way to score. They're gonna set up a field goal and then this happens and here you go, Alex Verdugo, take it. Yeah, it wouldn't end well for Empire. Last we checked, it was 6 nothing. Choya, if you got a final score, let us know. We are dying to know. Looks like the Empire doesn't strike back. All right, thanks, sorry, for the first half of the season. Douglas High School was the talk of the football world here in Southern Arizona. The Borderland Bulldogs started off unbeaten 5-0 and after going winless the year before, but the boys from Cochise County have gone on a two-game losing streak coming in at least, and we're hoping to end it tonight against Amphi. Let's do it here in Tucson. The Douglas High School cheerleaders were hoping to pump their team up. Douglas is deep in Amphi territory, and there'll be a fumble. Look at the ball floating around along the ground in slow-mo, and guess what? Blaze Haynes recovers the rock for Amphi. One of the Amphi team leaders, the Panthers, they are in business, and after that, Julian Encinas will get the ball and he will be breaking off. A big run, son! The Panthers have a first down and then quarterback Kevin Silva is about to hit Blaze Haynes and gotta love the one-handed grab. This could be a candidate for the player of the night. Amphi has a first down, Blaze Haynes doing it up. Coach Jorge Mendeville seems pretty happy at that point because now Orlando Acosta about to make a nice catch and a little bit of a nice run there. And finally, on the goal line, third down, and Kevin Silva takes it in there, like swimwear. Amphi takes a 14 to eight lead, and as happens a lot, the opposing team puts up a lot of points when our cameras leave. Douglas turned it up and wins 38-21. Hey, Coach James Fitzgerald and the Bulldogs of Douglas, well, definitely they have their program on the right track right now. And we're far from over with after the break, more sports, including a big showdown between Marana and Cienega. Yes, this very well could have been the game of the week. Can Trent Borgay and his brother put it up those big numbers all season? Plus, it's, I don't know, South Point and CDO there. They're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe as well while Salonita takes on Catalina on the north side. More sports, more energy, more Friday football fever after the break. Friday football fever. Brought to you by Arizona Health Exercise Equipment. Hey, welcome back to the Friday Football Fever. How's your energy, my high school football fans? I'm Paul Cicala, Ari Alexander, standing by. I'm about to throw him a pass there. But first, quick reminder. Good catch, Ari. All right, quick reminder. All of the scores for all the big games are on our ticker right below. And we'll have full rundowns on KVOA.com. But for now, let's get back into it, shall we? Coming into the matchup, both Southwind and CDO had a combined record of 12 wins and one loss over the last 13 games. Southwind headed to the Oro Valley with seven wins, no losses, while CDO was five and two overall, and it'll be the Dorado Zach Edelstein hitting Jose Cruz for the long pass. Danny Delora came to play, but South Point gets the ball right back, and Devin Green will find Lathan Ransom. And this, folks, is the touchdown. South Point flexing its muscles, and with the ball again, South Point's Bijan Robinson is gone with the win. Pew, pew, pew. The Lancers, they are pulling away with it. South Point wins big, final score. 49 to 6. All right, moving on from Oro Valley and CDO to the eastern reaches of Pima County where Cienega hosted Marana. Ari Alexander joins us with more. Good toss, Paul. This is a big one for playoff positioning. Cienega sits at number 7 in Class 5A while Marana, number 12. The Tigers have lost two of the last three while Cienega's one loss this year comes to the number one team in the state in Centennial. Not our game of the week, but it sure could have been. Let's go to Bobcat Stadium and early going. Cienega up 3 to nothing. Trenton Bourget going deep. And Terrell Hayward with the interception. Week 1 player of the week on week 3 player of the week crime. Then check out Cienega here. They're going to hand it off to Geo Owens, and he has got some speed, some moves on the outside here. Owens down the sideline, just barely going to step out right in front of me here. Then they're going to switch sides for the quarter break, and this time Geo Owens down the sideline one more time, and he is gone. 
Owens, Alacasa, Cienega up 10 to nothing. Miranda though would put up a fight in this game. Trenton Borgay going to the corner of the end zone looking for his brother Coben. Coben beats two Cienega defenders for the touchdown. Miranda would cut it 13 to seven, but Cienega picks up the win at home 44 to 28. Now let's go to the Friday football fever play of the week. And we are headed back to Catalina where Leon Hayes making like Willie Mays Hayes with that speed. A little cut back here and he is going to take the kick all the way to the house. Leon Hayes, our play of the week for this kick return touchdown. And it is hard to beat a kick return touchdown for our play of the week. Especially with a juke like that. All right. It's that time of the night. it we, off to you. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Well, we look forward to this time because it's time to say goodbye, but it's also bear down time. The broadcast between the U of A and Utah game just ended. We weren't allowed to show highlights until that broadcast is over with, but I'm going to hand it to you to Ooh. give an update. All right, yeah, two hands. Got to, here we go. <laughs> Arizona trailing by multiple touchdowns in this game for much of it. 42 to 10, the final. We're going to have full highlights at 530 tomorrow, especially talking about Khalil Tate, who would re-injure that ankle in his first half. Former Cienega standout Jamari Joyner gets in. Former Catalina Foothill standout Rhett Rodriguez in at quarterback. Uh, but we will talk a lot about that game That's tomorrow. right. I mean, if there is any good news a bit later in the game, former Catalina Foothills quarterback Rhett Rodriguez, he did throw a touchdown. To First Sandra one of his career. Peterson. Exactly. Rhett Rod actually threw for over 200 yards as the game uh, was winding down. But uh, once again, Arizona loses, loses big on the road. Mine again. All right. Hey, don't forget for full updates on high school football action and, of course, the Arizona football uh, team. We also have in-depth coverage on KVOA.com. For Ari Alexander, I'm Paul Cicala. Have a great weekend, my friends, and I'm about to take it in for a touchdown. Let's do this.